the series on MATLAB programming. Today we're going to be continuing our exploration of differential equations in MATLAB and discuss how we can construct some phase portraits for understanding systems of linear equations and systems of nonlinear differential equations. So let's get right into it. So the first thing that we need to uh, specify to MATLAB is the system of ODEs that we plan to solve. Uh, we're going to use the notation x prime is equal to fxy and y prime is equal to gxy. These functions could be uh, time dependent. In particular, they could have an input of t. The first few examples that I'm going to do are not going to have t in them, but the last example that we will do um, will actually consider the time varying system dynamics problem uh, for systems of differential equations. So let's start off with a very uh, basic uh, system of equations that you probably start off with uh, when you start learning this type of content, and that's just a linear system. So it's going to be of two variables, x and y. Let's do 2x minus 5y, and then let g be equal to 3x, 3x plus 4y. Uh, it's very easy to see that 0, 0 will be a critical point because that's when f and g are both equal to 0. So the next thing we need to decide is where to uh, graph our phase portrait in terms of domain. Um, so let's do an x minimum value of, let's do minus 5, an x max value of 5, and let's assume that we want to plot, let's go 50 vectors um, along that direction, and if I decide on my n, then my dx will just be equal to x max minus x min divided by the number of points that is desire on that grid. I'm going to do a, sym a symmetric uh, grid for y since I know 0, 0 is in the middle, so I'm going to do minus 5 and then y max will be equal to positive 5. Let's do the same number of points in that direction. Let's go 50 and let dy be equal to y max, y plus minus y min divided by n y. Now we don't have any time uh, for these this particular system, uh, but I'm just going to put it here just so you know I have it for a little bit later. Uh, but let's assume I uh, progress through a solution at t min is equal to zero, and then t max is equal to ten with a delta t value of zero point zero five. Again, we're not um, since t is not explicitly mentioned in this example, the dynamics will not change, although the solutions within those dynamics will change, and that's going to be practically the flow lines that we're going to be. Um, you know, approximating with some uh, vector fields. Once I have my domain specified, now we need to construct our mesh grid. So x, y is going to be equal to mesh grid. And then our x domain is x min by dx to x max. And then y min by dy to y max. So that's going to be our mesh grid for our domain. And then we're going to be plotting our uh, face portrait uh, gradient field. So the easiest way we can do that is with the quiver command. So we're going to do x, y, and then our uh, x component, which is f of x, y, and then uh, g of x, y for our y component. And that's practically it for our face portrait. So let's give this a run and make sure we don't have any issues. And this is indeed our phase portrait. Notice that I have some vectors that sort of go, um, let's see how these vectors are going. So we're definitely going in that direction, we're going in that direction, and we're going in that direction, and we're going in that direction. So it definitely looks like a spiral, but notice that practically all our vectors vanish in this interior. So let's make this uh, face portrait a little bit more nicer. The first thing that we can easily fix is this open white space on the outside. So in order to fix this in the easiest way, we can do an axis type function, and that's going to practically wrap our, uh, this axis type should go after our quiver, and then that will wrap our figure around whatever is being plotted, so that at least fixes one of these issues. The next issue is that all of these vectors are of different sizes. So one thing we could do is just make all of them unit vectors. So the easiest way we can make them unit vectors is to count the magnitude of each of them. So this is going to be equal to the square root of f of x, y, and then we're going to square that. Don't forget the dot for that exponent. And then plus g of x, y, and then squared, and that's going to be the magnitude. And then I'm going to divide that by our magnitudes, and that's going to make them all unit vectors. Right? So once I have that, then that's going to give us vectors uh, of the same exact lines. 
So if we sort of follow these flow lines now, it's a little bit more easier to see that this actually is a source. Now, what type of source is it? Well, notice that if I follow one of these flow lines, we're getting farther and farther away. So this is definitely a spiral source node. And you can easily verify uh, that with the eigenvalues that you're going to have complex eigenvalues where the real parts are going to be both positive and in particular the eigenvalues are for the matrix 2 minus 5 3 and 4. So now that we know how to construct phase portraits for linear systems, let's see if the phase portraits look nice for nonlinear systems. So a very basic nonlinear system that we could consider is the Lotka-Vartera system. So what I want to do is I want to sort of keep uh, these functions here, uh, just so I may revisit them later if I desire. Um, so let's consider the very uh, basic Lotka-Vartera system, f is equal to Let's do a growth rate of three for, let's say uh, F represents the rabbit population. Um, and let's assume that they have a negative interaction with foxes, uh, whose model is gonna be represented by Y. Uh, so let's assume that they have, do, they have a natural uh, death rate or emigration rate of, let's say two. Uh, and let's assume that they have a positive interaction with rabbits. Right. And of course, this is a lotka vatera system because these individual growth rate parameters are opposite signs and our interaction coefficients are opposite signs as well. So uh, X corresponds to our prey and Y corresponds to our predator. If you know anything about lotka vatera systems, then you probably already know um, that the non-mass extinction equilibrium is going to be located in quadrant one. So we do not need to consider any negative values for our domain. So let's just start off our x at zero and our y at zero as well. And we'll adapt the rest of it as we sort of analyze our dynamics. So if we give this a go, then this is going to be the graph of our phase portrait. And if you sort of look down here, there is your non-mass extinction equilibrium, um, which we can say can be sort of encapsulated or boxed in the region from 0 to 2 for x and maybe 0 to 1 for y. So let's sort of zoom in here. So let's do 0 for 2 for x and 0 to 1 for y. And this is going to be your face portrait for your lot of Vatera system with these particular dynamics. And there is your non-mass extinct equilibrium located at about 1 population for fo uh, rabbits and 0.4 population for fox. Now, if you don't like these colors, you can always change the color of your quiver pot um, by just changing or adding the command color is equal to, and then a three-dimensional vector, um, R, G, B, R being some number between zero and one, G being a number between zero and one, and B being another number between zero and one. So if you want sort of magenta, uh, that's gonna be a red one. Uh, zero for green and then one for blue. So, so that's going to be your magenta color face portrait. All right, so there's your magenta face portrait um, for your Lotica Futera system. But if you don't like all these colors, uh, then you can just default it uh, to black if it makes you feel any better. All right, so there is your face portrait. Now notice, uh, sometimes these lines do overlap depending on uh, how many points you have staggered along your X, M, Y domain. Uh, there is uh, some fancy ways to uh, fix these type of things, um, but one way that I've personally found to be a nice way to handle it is if you go to this uh, place where we sort of made our eigenvectors unit vectors, uh, first put parentheses around your L's and then within those parentheses, uh, do the square root of the number of values and x in that vector, and then do the square root of ny um, for that other. So that is, if you have a lot of vectors in the x direction, um, then you're going to make them a little bit more smaller. And if you have a lot of vectors in the y direction, you're going to make them smaller as well, proportional based upon your window. And that's going to give you usually a face portrait that's a little bit more nice to look at rather than just making them all unit vectors. But there are more advanced ways, but this is the basic one. All right, so this phase portrait is actually quite nice. Um, so let's just change up these dynamics just a tad bit, just to sort of see uh, what would happen uh, if these numbers don't necessarily follow a lot of Volterra model. All right, so let's assume again, uh, F is rabbit and G is fox. Uh, let's do smaller rip parameters so it's not uh, easily predictable. Let's do 1.3. 
And let's make this a little bit more smaller for 82. And for this, instead of our foxes uh, naturally dying or emigrating, let's actually make their um, growth rate positive. And actually, instead of having a positive interaction with rabbits, let's assume that they you know, have a negative interaction with rabbits too. Um, for example, let's assume that you know, they actually die off from eating rabbits. So it's a bad day for rabbits and foxes all around, even though they are independently growing. So since this is not a lot of our model, and if you don't study ecological systems in detail, um, then a phase portrait might lead you to sort of try and understand the dynamics of the system. So let's give this a go. So if we look at this particular phase portrait, let's analyze what we have here. So if we notice that we have our mass extinction, zero, zero in the corner, and that appears to be a source. Now, why is that the case? Well, our individual populations are independently growing, independent of one another, so getting away from zero is the natural case for growing systems. Now, this interaction is going to pose uh, negative scenarios for both, and if you sort of look here, it almost looks like a saddle point, right? So, saddle point, so that's actually quite interesting. So, if I were to choose points, for example, in this northern quadrant, Notice that all of my phase lines are sort of sweeping to the west and then going up. So that means if I choose an initial condition somewhere up here, um, then my rabbits will go extinct, foxes will decrease, but eventually my foxes will grow without bound. Now if I choose a point over here in this eastern quadrant, right over here, notice that my foxes uh, do decrease and my rabbits do decrease. Um, but if my foxes decrease enough, then my foxes still do decrease, um, but my rabbits do continue to go to positive infinity um, quite ever again. And if I choose a point over here in the western quadrant, notice that my rabbits increase, but eventually they do go to zero and foxes will grow, grow without bound. And over here we have that our rabbits grow without bound and our foxes appear to um, sort of fall off into oblivion. Right? So the dynamics of the system really depend on, at least the long-term dynamics of the system, depend on where you start in that particular system. So that's actually quite interesting. Now, let's actually do a time-varying version of this model. Let's actually go back to the original Latka Volterra model um, that I gave before, where we had this um, point that is located right here. And let's actually uh, zoom this picture a little bit out, so x max 10. Uh, y max 10 um, so that our little uh, center point is located in that bottom left hand corner um, because if it is a time varying system maybe this equilibrium will also change with respect to time so what I want to do is I want to assume that rabbits and foxes still have these uh, independent growth parameters but let's assume that this interaction coefficient actually disappears with respect to time so I'm going to throw in a time parameter t here and then I'm going to make the 7 go to 0 and I'm going to make this 2 go to 0 as well as t goes to infinity right um, and let's assume that t starts at 0 0.1 so we don't have any uh, issues uh, for dividing by zero and stuff like that. Um, so that is our new FNG which is actually quite interesting. Uh, so what else do we need to change here? So we're gonna have f of x, y. So this line definitely needs to change and this line definitely needs to change but our t is going to change as well so we need to do a for loop. If we want to sort of uh, you know sketch this out um, through some time domain so let's do let's do four our dummy variable b double t equals to t min by dt to t max so that's gonna be our for loop let's throw this inside of our for loop and now let's input double t as our time variable double t and then double T, and then double T. Um, now, sometimes uh, this will graph um, a little bit too fast. Um, so throwing a pause function here is sometimes recommended. And sometimes it's nice to sort of watch the animation play out. In order to do that, we need to use the draw now function. 
So this is going to be our time varying system of differential equations where the interaction um, between rabbits and, foxes, uh, rabbits and foxes actually go to zero uh, as time gets larger. You know, they tire, you know, they get tired of each other for some reason, whatever. So if we look at these dynamics, what will we actually see, right? And you might not be able to see anything, but notice that our equilibrium point is located somewhere around here and it might be not might not be able to be obvious but do notice that it is changing right it's moving to the right so if I sort of stop this simulation and actually zoom in a little bit this might have been a little bit too far in terms of x and y and let's assume the number is the same it might be a little bit more obvious now because you can actually see that particular critical point in that bottom corner where all the points are sort of revolving. But as time goes to infinity, in order to reach equilibrium, you actually need more rabbits. That's practically what we see here. Also, notice that my points are actually moving up. So also, in order to reach equilibrium, we need more foxes, right? So in order to reach equilibrium as time goes to infinity, if you do not have interaction, you need more initial population of both species, at least based upon this particular uh, permutation of ecological model coefficients. Obviously, this is one variation of several different variations for ecological predator-prey models, but I'll let you sort of explore the rest of them because now that you can sort of animate time-varying uh, nonlinear systems, you literally can do whatever you want in terms of a two-system dynamical analysis. So I hope you enjoyed this little exposition of MATLAB programming, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.